What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Cooligans, uh, another exciting episode. Uh, it is, like we mentioned last uh, episode, it is Super Bowl week. So we have, uh, you know, Alexis is away. Alexis is in London, um, you know, doing, you know, letting letting uh, the, the British know that uh, the NFL is, <laughs> he's like, a, he's an ambassador for the National Football League. You think there. that's what he's doing? You think Alexis is out there being like, yo, guys, you hear about this Patrick Mahomes? He's, he's <laughs> you hear incredible. About, you hear about the real football? Ball. That's right. That's how he starts every conversation out there. I'm sure they love that. I'm sure they love that out there. <laughs> so we have, um, uh, you know, it's been an exciting week of uh, special guests, and today is, is another one. We're going to be joined by Tony Rocha. Tony Rocha is a MLS Cup winner with New York City Football Club. Uh, he has retired, but but and he is now in uh, new endeavors. But Tony is uh, Tony's the homie. Tony played with NYCFC. Sure. He played for a couple uh, MLS clubs, but, uh, you know, he uh, even uh, lower league. And it's uh, just a fascinating story of someone uh, who, who, you know, got got to the mountaintop, mountaintop mm -hmm. of American soccer. So Tony Roach is going to be uh, chatting with us uh, in a little bit. We spoke to him uh, just a, a couple weeks ago and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, he came ago. to the studio and uh, we had a great chat. So. The uh, a couple uh, quick things before we get to our interview. I I mentioned last episode that uh, Everton uh, drew against uh, against Spurs, and mm -hmm. I think you know I think Everton fans were happy, but Arsenal fans were even happier, right? Because yeah. they love <laughs> they love when bad things happen to Spurs. But uh, a funny thing that happened uh, in that game was that Richarlison, uh, former Everton. Super, mm -hmm. superstar hero the, one of the people who kept everton in superstar, the Premier League. i mean listen for everton fans definitely here i was gonna say superstar might be a little bit strong <laughs> in, the, in the general general Dude, terms he's i mean if he stayed at everton a little longer he, he would have gotten a statue at some point um but i mean that's that's a crazy take i mean that, look it could have been a it could have been a small statue okay i mean <laughs> it's statues, a bobblehead it's it could, a bobblehead bobble, richardson bobblehead night he's earned he's earned it <laughs> <laughs> do they do stuff like that in the Premier League? Do they have those? Like, I don't think so because gimmicks? I think the fans will throw them at this at the at, on the pitch <laughs> <laughs> if they if the team plays well. So I don't think they do that too easily. That's fair. Um, That's a good. Point. But there was a uh, Richardson scored two goals uh, at Goodison Park and you know didn't celebrate and two also two amazing goals and mm -hmm. uh, so fans were uh, you know I think happy that the team ended up drawing uh but there was a, a funny video from uh on that i saw on tiktok from efc toffee efc toffee uh what's his name i'll, I'll play right now uh efc toffee 32327 Okay, so this kid is he's out, he's putting out his government out here. Three two three two seven. <laughs> so, bro. Definitely um, not a bot. Definitely not a bot. <laughs> but he is. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But what are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I should. I, I was supposed to switch the proper transition, and I forgot to. But yeah, it, let's it leave it in. This is this is the vibe of the show. <laughs> okay, won't happen again, everybody. Um, <laughs> so he's. Uh, I just want to play his video because uh, it, it was pretty funny. Yeah, that Richardson. No, I'll have to do this. <laughs> so, if you're listening, he is punching. <laughs> he is punching his Everton uh, Richarlison jersey. Uh, that mm -hmm. it's an older one. It's number thirty. And uh, but the, the the cool thing is that Richarlison saw the TikTok and replied in the comments and Richardson's comment says yes bro I don't like the number 30 I prefer seven uh, which was his <laughs> other number uh, at Everton so uh it's 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 nice to see uh, when players yeah. can uh you know laugh along with uh mm -hmm. with the fans even though it, it it is difficult to watch your former player uh score against you you know it, yeah Everton um Richardson has seemingly uh, the utmost respect for uh, for Everton, he was just yeah. like, "Bro, I I see what's going on here. I, I have a feeling points are gonna get docked because uh, <laughs> they're <laughs> they're literally uh, uh, stuffing money in the refrigerators. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> things are things are like not up like up to par. Uh, so I feel like I should probably get out of here. Uh, not super yeah. professional. So yeah, uh, I mean, I respect it. I respect it. I'm glad to try this and just jumping in the comments. He seems to like be a relatively like." 
normal dude on social media. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he doesn't seem to take things too personally. He doesn't like get upset. He's like KD, you know, he's just jumping in everybody's right, right. mentions. Like they're like, what are you talking about me? What are you saying about me? So, I love it. Yeah, I respect K- everything. Uh, Kevin Durant awesome. the other day, uh, he, somebody, I, I think, I don't know if the game already happened, but the game against the Nets, when yeah. he was go, uh, yeah. going to go play there, uh, somebody asked, like, you know, the the Nets worth, I think, thinking about doing, like, a tribute video uh, mm-hmm. to to Kevin Durant for, you know, in his game uh, returning to the Barclays. And uh, they were like, what, what, what tribute are we going to show? Us getting knocked out of the playoffs and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, all the literally <laughs> under, just underachieving. Yeah. And he commented on it, and he was like, "Yeah, bro, I agree. They better not do a tribute video for me." Well, did you see? You saw they gave him a tribute video, right? I they didn't see the video. Did no, okay. Yeah, so. they did. They did one for him, and I, I mean, I gotta be honest. It looked like it was about forty-five seconds long, so I'm not sure, like you said, how many great moments they actually were to celebrate. But yeah, he got one, even though he didn't really want it. Yeah, it seems it seems a little um, I don't know unnecessary. Um, yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I it's th- there's a certain um, w- I think with players bouncing around. Uh, the, oh yeah, and the, the NBA now, and the NBA is so different. NBA like everyone plays for every team now. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. There's just like what, loyalty. Nah, bro. Uh, just, Especially not for KD. Yeah, they should have. <laughs> they could have done some banter and like done a video of like an ai burning of a kevin durant jersey uh you know just uh yeah. stir the pop so yeah <laughs> exactly well then what they should have done is just zoomed in on his toe on the line against the bucks that would have sent <laughs> them to the finals if he had made the three instead of the two i'm not sure if you saw also there was a fan i think he was like second or third row at the game who was literally yelling kevin i love you Kevin, Kevin, and one of the stewards had to tell him, like, yo, man, what are you doing right now? This is way too much. You got to relax. It's you know what? Cool. This is how we, we we are too much connected to uh, to, to soccer because you just called the, the security guards at an NBA game a steward. A steward. <laughs> Bro, they what don't do, What do you it. call it? Just a, I guess it's just a security guard. Yeah, yeah. Bro, they, no, it's yeah, infecting our language, me. dog. <laughs> <laughs> call me, call me Patrick Vell of the United States. I'm a, I'm a British American. I'm a British American. And I even met, I guess because this is another episode. I, I don't know if I mentioned Miguelito. Obviously, Alexis is not here. Uh, I'm here. Producer Mike. You know Valley. the voice. You know the voice. Yeah, you know the they, voice. They know the voice. You, you don't see the, you don't see the face too often. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, this is uh, Mike Malley. Uh, so shout yes, out sir. to Miguelito for uh, hopping on the intro. Okay. Um, so uh, anything with uh, so t- uh, Tony Rocha uh, is coming mm-hmm. up in a second. I don't know where we are in time, but the, no, we're good. We can we can keep going. Okay. okay. Tony Rocha is uh, like I said. He he's. Uh, played in lower league. He has a, a fascinating story uh, uh, mm-hmm. from getting out of, uh, you know, playing soccer in Texas uh, uh, to getting, you know, uh, playing for the Austin Aztecs, uh, uh, getting drafted in MLS, um, yeah. ending up with Orlando City, uh, and then ended up with NYCFC and became like a definitely a, a, a utility guy. You know, mm-hmm. um, they, a guy played multiple positions, but ended up. Uh, winning an MLS Cup, and it's just a, a really, really dope story. Yeah. Um, guys like I feel like guys like Tony always have the best stories because they they've you know been around, they've seen the highs, they've seen you know some of the not so highs. So yeah, yeah. I always love having guys like Tony on the show. He was great. Yeah, there's a lot of these uh, these stories in MLS that I think get. Um, you know, that sort of disappear because uh, mm-hmm. the people are only paying attention to the designated players and the, and the superstars. Exactly. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, Tony uh, has uh, is definitely a veteran uh, uh, of the league and, and is now doing some uh, some new things and, and started an agency and helping mm-hmm. out, um, you know, players that are coming after him. Not after him, like not they have. He doesn't have enemies. I mean, like <laughs> he's got ops. He's got ops. <laughs> um, so, all right. So uh, we can get to that. I think we're we're good to go. All right. So, um, uh, as always, make sure you subscribe at Soccer Cooligans. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. Shout out to everybody watching on DraftKings Network as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, so let's get to it. Here's our uh, awesome convo uh, with the MLS Cup winner. Tony Rocha. Another amazing guest. <laughs> Look at this. That's all, all we have is just uh, uh, bro. 
Uh, incredible guest what after incredible guest. What an honor guest. it is to be invited on the show. Right? It, it really <laughs> is. We've... And not enough people talk about it. <laughs> Maybe we so, should. So we anymore. have to, uh, you know. If you don't toot your own horn, you might not hear any music. <laughs> okay. You know? uh, and you know what? I'm hearing a symphony right Damn. now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> turn it down. <laughs> because uh, we are joined by uh, uh, an, an incredible guest, a, uh, a, a retired player. But, but an MLS Cup winner. Exactly. Uh, and, and we were there. And we got to to share in that uh, joy of uh, of celebrating an MLS Cup victory. The look on uh, this man's face when we pulled up to the after after party. <laughs> he, was like, he was just like, "Are oh, we yeah. letting anybody in now? Did they sell tickets to this thing? How are you here? <laughs> Did you win like a, a Make a Wish? Yeah. Or? Did you guys marry Maxi Morales? <laughs> are you one of his eighteen kids? Why are you here? <laughs> I think he has like two. He's very reasonable. Amount it of just kids. seems like a lot of kids in his Instagram. Um, so, uh, but yes, we. We got to celebrate an MLS Cup victory in 2021 with uh, this man. A mi- he played in the midfield for NYCFC. Just had uh, uh, an incredible, uh, uh, just an incredible year, and uh, it was great. We spoke to him in 2021 uh, briefly, and now we can have uh, you know a little bit, uh, talk about the future mm. of, oh, yeah. uh, of uh, a little catch up. A little catch up. So uh, <laughs> everyone, please welcome the homie. Tony Rocha. What's good, Tony? Thank you. Thank you guys for having me on. And I appreciate the intro. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have to awkwardly sit through. Oh, yeah. I was, I was waiting for my turn to speak. <laughs> oh, my God. How long you guys are going? These no, guys are long longer. I just feel like you haven't b- praised how many amazing guests we have on this show. Yeah. yeah well, what's yeah. taking you so long? In fact, we're going to redo this. <laughs> uh, no, Tony, man. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Like, uh, like I said, uh, you know, you are uh, officially a retired, uh, uh, you know, soccer player. Yep. And uh, this is... There's, you know, we spoke to you in 2021, and we got to like talk about what it was. Um, you know, this was before uh, NYCFC won uh, uh, MLS Cup. Mm-hmm. It was a, obviously a weird, difficult year. Um, you know, with, with a pandemic, and and it was you know the year after the MLS is back, and all the it, so it was kind of strange. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to get to know Tony Rocha. Yes, not the player. The man. The man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, because there's, you've had an interesting uh, uh, career. I mean, it's been, uh, uh, you know, you look through the, Tony Rocha's Wikipedia and, and you've been kind of all over the country playing, oh, yeah. you, uh, playing in, in lower leagues uh, and then uh, getting to a- MLS and getting that, 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 you know, that shot to, to kind of prove yourself. But l- let's start there. How do you uh, get into the game uh, and then we'll end up getting to uh, lifting the trophy for, uh, with, you know, with NYCFC? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, I mean, I started playing soccer when I was five, five or six, had an older brother who was kind of thrown into it. None of my parents played. So it was kind of one of those sports where all the kids play soccer and stuff. So. I uh, played with my older brother, and then I just grew up playing and just fell in love with the sport. And where was this? Where did oh, you sorry, grow? Houston, Texas. Houston, yeah, Texas. Houston, Texas. Grew up in the South. Yeah. Um, big football, big American football. I know we're not talking about yeah. football no, no, no. now. I is that get this? It. Or is that this? <laughs> One of these, right? I think it's this. Is this one? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. A, a, Aggies? Hook'em horns? No, hook'em horns. Yeah, yeah, hook'em horns. <laughs> hook'em horns. <laughs> hook'em horns. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't know. We're, we don't we're, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're but, East Coast yeah. elites, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we're, we do this for pizza. Bro. We don't know. You gotta do this, sir. You gotta do this, You're a Giants fan. But yeah, it's we don't get a lot of it, but I know these are upsetting each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like me just doing that is probably gonna... Get a lot of unfollowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone yeah. just threw but, their hat. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, sometimes I, I crip walk on the show and bloods get really upset. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big thing. I'm like, why did I do it again? Why? Oopsie. I'm getting canceled and by I'm the wearing, bloods. I'm wearing all red. They're mad at me. I'm not stopping. I'm yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting canceled by the bloods. <laughs> It's absolutely hilarious. Oh, man. <laughs> can't work with this. <laughs> okay, so yes. Uh, all right, so, uh, you know, you play, play with all your bro- older brother. Yep. Um, wh- when does it get uh, serious of like, oh, yo, I can actually be a professional? Probably, well, I don't know about pro- professional, but probably like when I was 13, 14, uh, made one of the youth national, like, ODP camps. Yeah. And that was kind of was like, all right, well, I'm pretty good at this sport. I have a potential future in it. So that How was one kind of like. Though? Were you just like playing it for like a travel team or something? So back in the day, there was a thing called ODP. It might still be going on, but ODP, Olympic Development Program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of where they have different regions throughout the country. And uh, you would have like state teams, regional teams, national teams. So you try for the state teams, you made it regional and then national. And so I tried out and I was in a, I ended up making the national team at I think U15, U16. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's a uh, obviously a great uh, feeling, and then you uh, you go to college, you go mm-hmm. to Tulsa. Yep. And, Tulsa. And, and then the uh, as far as 
you know, I think now, you know the MLS uh, uh, draft just happened uh, what, last week or a week or two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and now we're we're sort of at the point where people feel like it's either kind of pointless or useless, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't necessarily know because obviously some decent players uh, make it through and 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 really have to have like uh, you know go on to have prosperous careers. Mm-hmm. But what what are your thoughts on the or even what was your experience mm-hmm. with the draft? And and do you share that same sort of sentiment that it doesn't really have that much purpose now? I mean, I don't think it had much purpose back then, to be honest. Okay. Um, oh, when I was coming out of college. Yeah. Because it's more of like a glorified tryout, to be honest. Like, you get your name, it's an MLS draft, and you go there, and you're not really guaranteed a contract. So it's just you're going there for preseason. Right. So I think a lot of people like it now, which is because, like, name and the ESPN or whatever, like, got drafted and all that stuff. But it's essentially just like a tryout. That's interesting. So it's yeah. nothing guaranteed. So if nothing you can't guaranteed. Pick- you, well, you well it might be like the first, first ten. Yeah, the first oh, ten okay. might have like guaranteed contracts or like Generation Adidas. I don't know if they they do that anymore. They but still do. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think Generation Adidas get pulled out of the draft. Don't know. I don't know. I mean, every every yeah, every fifteen minutes, MLS changes their yeah. <laughs> the, the, the rules and uh, yeah. MLS next and, yeah, and the no. whole thing. Um, so I, I I know that you you got drafted by Sporting Kansas City. Yeah. So I do have a story about that. So um, during college, I was playing in PDL, which is like a summer league for. Mm-hmm. Uh, high school, or for college players to play so they don't lose their eligibility um, with this team in Austin called Austin Aztecs. Yeah. The last year that I was going to play was with that them. the Austin Aztecs that went and became Orlando? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that was... The one that they re-brought that back went to Orlando because that they moved to yeah, Orlando. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. very cool. So um, I was playing video with them for the summer and then they came to me and they were like, hey, we're going to go USL the next year when you graduate college. We want you to play on the team. And I was like, I think I can go MLS. Like, I don't want to say anything right now or come in or anything, but that's obviously, like, an option. So, <clears throat> Sporting Kansas City drafts me. The coach from Austin calls and is like, hey, I know you wanted to go MLS. Um, you can go try out with them. And then, like, obviously there's an opportunity for you to come back and stay in, in Austin and everything. And so I go to Kansas City, do really well there. The coach calls me and is like, look, I know you want to go over there, but we're doing preseason now. Like, we um, – or doing like a formation, like we want you back. So it was a decision: do I stay there and potentially get a contract, or do I go to USL with like a guaranteed contract and stuff? Right. And so, and there's a chance that if you stay in training with Sporting Kansas City, you I don't could, make that team, and then you also might not be able. Yeah, to Yeah, he was contract. like, "Look, we're gonna pull your contract if you don't come back and train with Ooh. us now." Mm. So it was a decision. It was like, "Look, I know I'm good enough to make the Kansas City team." Like I talked to Peter Ramiz, and he was like, "Look, I've only seen you for like a week and a half, but like you're a good player. I just need to see more." Um. So I decided to go to USL and play play in Austin, and um, looking back on it, I think it was a good decision. Okay. Yeah. So wow. I, I mean, and you think it was a good decision because of the, the, the like some of the guarantees, or even the guarantees to playing time, or what? What were the positives? Yeah. Well, the positives was guaranteeing um, just to play because I could could have stayed at Kansas City, and not make the roster, and then not knowing where I'm going. Like I played under this coach for the PDL, like I know the system, I know yeah, the style, yeah, yeah. like I I knew I fit in well, so. I knew I was going to have a good opportunity to play, and that's most important probably when you're first coming out of college. Yeah. Was there a fear that maybe you might not get looks? Because I know for <clears> in particular for MLS, there's a big there's. I would love to figure out a way where there is a ladder for players to be looked at to move up. Oftentimes, you see Premier League teams go into the into the championship and pull yeah. somebody. You very rarely see that happening in U.S. soccer. Was there yeah. a fear that maybe? you were pulling yourself out of the system because you know MLS teams are going to go to Europe or some yeah. of these underdeveloped sort of uh, maybe nations football-wise to pull players out? Um, I think when I was still in USL, they were still doing it a uh, fair amount. Like, I know there's a lot of players going from USL to MLS. Like, I think now whenever I left New York City to go to Orange County, I knew going to USL wasn't going to come back to MLS. Right, right, right. Like, I knew that was going to happen. My age, like, I know players aren't making that change anymore unless they're 17, 18 years old, so... I think when I was doing it then, I think I was young enough, and if I played well, I was, would have had the opportunity. Interesting. Yeah, it's a um, – yeah, I think even as a fan, you, you sort of um, – you have a bias, right? You yeah. think – you hear USL, and you're like, oh, how's this guy from the lower league going to help yeah. the, the team? But then it's just like there are – I mean, one of the names that I think of now, um, Tyler Pash, right? I think he put, he was at uh, Indy 11, then went to Houston yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and played pretty well. And I, and I don't think he's with Houston anymore. It just seems like there is a we – we know, like, the volatility of just being a, a professional American soccer player oh, yeah. who is – 
who is not uh, chicharito, yeah. right? Like it, there is a, a, a lot of uncertainty. There is uh, you're tr you're trying to focus on like yo, am I gonna have a job this uh, this year or next oh, yeah. year? Um, I mean, as far as the I don't know if, I don't know if it's is it like is it a fear? Is it like you just have to believe in yourself to such a high degree to believe like yo, I can make an MLS roster and 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 go in to every like preseason and every training with that attitude. Like, how much do you have to prove yourself to um uh, to coaches and stuff like that just because you're you didn't come from Europe yeah. and, and you know how how day to day like what's that like? I mean, that's every day. Not only proving to like the coaches, but like yourself that you're good enough to be there. Um, so just for the fast forward the story a little bit, I went to Orlando City B yeah. from Austin um, with the USL team there, and I knew I was going to be training sometimes with the first team, and so that was like um, a booster right there. Like if I can go out there and train and show that I'm good enough to play an MLS team, then I could make the jump. So um, probably three fourths of the way of that first year, um, I played a couple open camp games with the MLS team in Orlando City, and then the coach calls me into well, so the coach was Adrian Heath at the time. Yeah. He ends up getting fired. Um, and he's the one that brought me up to the Open Cup games, the MLS team, and I was like, man, that was my yeah, opportunity. Now he's out the door. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you guys Where doing? You going, bro? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they signed J Jason Kreis, um, and then we had a friendly against, I think, Stoke City or Sunderland. I can't remember which one it was, but played well against them and then played a USL game against Louisville City, and then he calls me to his office the next day. And um, I'm sitting there, and then he's just like, it's the last day of the trading window, and he was just – Talking to me is like, what would, or how would you feel if, if I told you that you are an MLS player? I thought he was like, didn't know if he was questioning me or right, his first right. time conversation. Just and stuff. Like, and I'm like, you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> so get out. So get him out. <laughs> you <laughs> failed the test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know <laughs> what I was pulling from you. <laughs> All um, the punk cameras come in. <laughs> <laughs> we burned you. Oh, yeah, the cameras come in. <laughs> um, but yeah, he asked me that, and I'm like, super excited. I'm like, I mean, Obviously, that's what every kid wants to hear, like, yeah, MLS yeah. and stuff. And he was like, yeah, so, I mean, we have to figure out some logistic things, but you're, we want to sign into MLS contract, so. What do you think you did then? that made them want to, what was it specifically about your game that made them be like, yes? Um, that is a great question. I think. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the audience, the audience agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think, I don't know, I mean, I was just a young player. I was very versatile. Not only can play midfield, but. Also, left defense, left back. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I was just a, a hungry player. Like, they could see my skill. They could see, how, like, how hard I worked. And, and yeah, I think that was just a good asset to the team. Yeah, That's I mean, awesome. even when, when, you know, when you sign with NYCFC, and I, obviously, uh, if if anyone's not aware, you know, we we, we basically started this show because of NYCFC uh, in 2015. Uh, we got season tickets. And so, obviously, uh, you know, we've been season, season ticket holders since day one. And when you signed with the club, it was, it, you know, obviously a lot of players come uh, in and out of the club. And it was a thing of, like, I don't know who this guy is. No yeah. one knew. Was it? Was who is this no guy? <laughs> um, is it Roca? Is it Ro Rocha? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't be Rocha. Nobody wants to no. call themselves after a buck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we were as we we weren't sure, but then uh, you know, seeing you get minutes and you would you was uh, uh, sub into games, it speaks a lot to the type of player that you are of like constantly having to prove yourself. And then when you get uh, an opportunity, it just shows that like I've. I've dealt with as many punches as possible. Oh, like yeah. maybe this isn't as scary as it really, you know, maybe w would be to to yeah. other people. So that I mean, when Alexis is speaking to her, like, what about your game? That's like the first thing that that comes to mind. There was a uh, uh, throughout your uh, uh, career with NYCFC, there was a, just a like composure kind of like a right composure, a, a like I don't care if you don't know who I am. I don't know uh, how much. That was a. I don't know how important that was to you, um, but but I, maybe you can speak to that. Of just like kind of like you, you know doing your job and not necessarily uh, uh, being selfish or thinking about yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure a lot of professional athletes can relate to this, but growing up, a lot of people tell you you're not going to make it, you're not good enough, you're not fast, and all that stuff. So, I guess just developing that like resilient mindset in Orlando specifically. So when I came here, it was like, you guys can say whatever you guys want about me. Like I know. How I am a player, like I know, if I'm not good enough now, I'm gonna be able to get there with the constant work. So just having that mindset and 
when when people say <laughs> you know as a professional athlete, a lot of people tell you they can't, that you, you're not going to make it. Who are all these people? <laughs> like, I just don't, why yeah. are there so many evil human beings that were like, yeah, you're walking by and be like, what do you play? Nah, you ain't making it. <laughs> oh, you got a dream? Nah, yeah. that ain't happening. Nah, you ain't making it. Anyway, did you want fries with that? Like, why, why am I having this conversation with you? <laughs> why were, were there any most notable people that you really, that, that fueled you, who told you that you couldn't make it? Like name dropping on the show? Right, well, whatever you want to do. No, 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 no. Not when I was. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <Yeah>. Mom. <laughs> yeah. You know where you were? <laughs> Senora Rocha. I'm assuming you're No, no, no. Well, no I'm not going to do it. My, my, my mom was probably one of the most supportive people. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> it just seems so far fetched. Uh, to, look, at, as, as stand up comics, you know. That's also a pretty we ridiculous dream. We, we're not make it. Nobody, no, the mirror, <laughs> the mirror tells me more yeah. than anybody else that I'm not gonna make it. We could literally watch back sets of ours where people are laughing and we're like, ah, oh, we ain't got it. <laughs> but, like that, we are. But, but for the enemies. most, for the most part, people are usually like, when I told people about, like I'm gonna be a stand-up comic, everybody's like generally like, oh, that's cute, that's polite. Like they will never tell me yeah. that they think it's a bad idea. Yeah. But it seems with professional athletes, it's it's like much more common to be like, nah, you, you, why do that? You're not gonna make it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's a that's a good point. But I mean, like, I, I wish it wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's unfortunate, but especially like coaches in your youth year, like maybe someone develops a lot slower than someone else, and it's like, no, you're not good enough, or you're not this and that, and then it's they just wash them off or write them off. And yeah, yeah. damn. It, I mean, it's, but, it's it's disappointing because I yeah. and I and I think you know we're. Um, I mean, the, the, I think the culture of. Maybe even youth sports is changing a little bit, where mm -hmm. maybe you you sort of hear less of that, or maybe it's maybe less toxic. Maybe it's less. I, I think it's sort of moved from like face to face to just social media. Like now, yeah. the negativity is just on social media. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. in I mean, in the comment section. It's easier to be negative on social media <laughs> than without a like, doubt. Yeah, uh, somebody recently put this it was uh, two guys. I can't remember what it is. They talk about the NBA. It's Richard Jefferson and somebody else. But they were like. We get constant negativity, yeah. and then those people will see us in public and want to buy his beers. Yeah. I was like, what is it about you on social media that made you mean to me? And they'll tell you, like, oh, dude, I, I roasted you the other day. And I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you thought about not doing that? <laughs> what about young Tony? Like, what is it that your family wanted you to be? They were just supporting me with whatever I wanted to do. And they could probably see that I wanted to play pro at a young age, so they're like, we're going to support you with playing pro. Really? Yeah. Damn. What about your older brother? He tore his ACL his senior year of high school. Oh, and hate so, those. Yeah, yeah I know. So he went to D3 school, and he was still playing college. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you got to be like, he's the Elmas Cup joke. Please don't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. I think there's like rules or laws. Yeah. That you, yeah. you can't even be that close to it. I wouldn't want you to blow your ACL again. <laughs> <laughs> you were just mean about it. <laughs> Why don't you sit? Dude. I'll put it on your lap. Don't get hurt. What's he do now? Uh, he works in accounting oh, in, very yeah, cool. in Mississippi. Nice. Mississippi? Yep. yep. Damn. All right. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Younger Orlando. brothers in Colorado. Yeah. Yep. All over the country. Wow. And then you also um, represented uh, Belize in, uh, in, you know, international duty. What was uh, that Are experience like? Belizean? No, uh, my mom was born in Belize, and okay. then my dad is Mexican. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. And then, so the... You know what was the what was the phone call like? How did you get into uh, what were the convers conversations like about playing uh, for the Belizean national team? So I mean, I originally wanted to play for the U.S. national team. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the older I got, and I wasn't getting the call, still waiting on it. <laughs> but um, you know, so come I was on, like, Belize. <laughs> 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 no, I was like, my, my my mom's born in Belize. Like, I'll see if I can try to get the Belize passport and then potentially play for them. I know they play and they qualify for the Gold Cup once. Um, they play in World Cup qualifiers and stuff, so it's good exposure. Like, if I potentially want to make a move from MLS, like, that could be an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So, um, got my passport from them. I actually reached out to their, like, Facebook group because I couldn't get a hold of the coach or the manager or whatever. Like, didn't, didn't know who it was at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they responded back, and then I got a message from the, like, federation president or whatever, and then just start the conversation from there. That's amazing. Yeah. Sounds crazy. <laughs> so you know, the admin was like, God, <laughs> God, I think I'm signing somebody. <laughs> I just told someone to 
turn the team. I don't think I'm supposed to do this. Just like this a 19-year-old just in Belize. Ah. <laughs> I think we're getting scammed. <laughs> what? Any any um, memorable games as far as uh, um, you know uh, playing for Belize? Is there? Uh, you know, what's the uh, obviously the the what's the level? skill level is yeah. obviously uh, very different. But yeah. what was the experience like? I'm sure it was cool to uh, you know c connect with your roots in that yeah. way, and then uh, and then what you know what were your teammates like and yeah. all that stuff. I mean, it was a cool experience. Um, the last time I went down to Belize was when I was, when I was younger. Um, and I still have most of my mom's side of family out there. So going down and being able to see them for the first time in a long time was was pretty cool. That's awesome. And just the uh, different culture down there. It's a Caribbean country. So um, if I'm not thinking English is the main language. Yeah, it's right? the only yeah. I think Central American country where their primary language is yeah. English. Okay. So, a any um, uh, any teams you played on that were like surprising? Like okay, yo, these, these pretty strong squad or whatever. Um, or were you like a god when you I touched that? <laughs> <laughs> no, so to be, to be fair, there, on, you know? <laughs> there was uh, one other player that played in the MLS, uh, Michael Salazar. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was the one, one of the players that played in the MLS, and then the other guys just played down in Belize. So okay, yeah, different uh, levels of. Uh, did um, I mean, did you ever play against Dominican Republic by any chance? No, we played against. I think the best team we played against was Guatemala. Okay, a couple years ago. All right. What yeah. was uh? How how was that game? What was was lost, lost two zero. Okay, right, not bad. Yeah, yeah, not, not bad. bad. What what were the tactics? Four four two low block. Uh no, we played a four two three one. Really? Yeah. Are you out here trying four, to ball? He's <laughs> trying to. Yeah. I believe. I believe that we win. I've been waiting for that one. I, did I, it. I thought about that in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, amazing. I kind of uh, thought you guys would join in. I'm <laughs> I was. Everyone's just like he's not gonna. I wasn't. I mean, it was. Is it completely disrespectful to his culture to no, join in on the jam? Yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> kind of fun. If all of us did it, it might be a little bit We're all standing up. <laughs> so. Uh, all right, so that's dope. And then uh, I, I do want to talk about um, the, the 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 2021 MLS Cup final run uh, with uh, with NYCFC. Obviously, it's a huge um, was a huge moment for for us. And I will, uh, let me ask because we we actually filmed ourselves both in the uh, New England game yep. and there with like our reactions to the penalties. And it was we lost years of our life just sitting there watching these penalties. It's like my heart's beating. You were on the bench and in that final. Was it as difficult for you in that moment? Oh, 100%. What is going 100%. through your mind? Because I know, especially in MLS, it's like year over year contracts change yeah. and blah, blah. Are you thinking like the what could be the difference between making it and not, like winning and not? Yeah, I mean, normally in PKs, it's who has a better keeper. And we definitely had the better keeper on the day. And so like going into it in the huddle, we were just like, we're for sure going to win this. Like we didn't nearly lose the MLS Cup final in the last 30 seconds to lose right now. So. Right. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, we were definitely we were confident. I mean, that. but not yeah, not only not only that one because the obviously the 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 penalties in the final, the penalties against New England yeah. uh were also Matt Turner. Matt Turner yeah, <laughs> well, who was like a penalty stopper. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was his whole thing. And and um uh, and what was it? Uh, they won the supporter shield that year yeah, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. They were the best. They had the best season of any MLS team ever in history. Uh, no. Right. Uh, so they, they <laughs> there was a, a <laughs> <laughs> look, look they got to the playoffs. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 so there was a lot to be sort of uh, uh, nervous about, yeah. but there, there's but something happened that season, right? Because it wasn't um, w the, the strongest year for NYCFC, nope. and um, you know uh, the the you know we were all we all had heard, especially when Ronnie Dyla had uh, gotten to the club, and we saw him uh, uh, you know taking off his clothes oh, at, yeah. at Celtic and when celebrating and doing push ups and doing push ups. <laughs> You didn't have like an OnlyFans. You don't follow the sport that closely. Okay. All right, but well, you know I'll support him if you want to. Secrets up, Ronnie. But the uh, so th there was sort of a lot of excitement, but the the, the season had uh, you know had it was a roller coaster. Had those ups and downs, and then you know the the moment definitely. I think a lot of people remember it was the free kick goal from uh, from Goody to Arrington against Atlanta, which uh, which led to a draw. Yeah. I think it was one one. If I'm not mistaken, couldn't score before. Couldn't it score. No, it, was no. like, it was like a ten game yeah, no. just rut. Oh yeah. And and so what do you remember about that that you know that low point of the season and and then it just uh, the, the tide turning. Yeah. Um. So a lot of it was just week after week. Trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the process. Like we got tired of hearing it. It's like look we. Can't score. Yeah. We're trusting yeah. the process. Like, And to be fair, 
I mean, he would bring up the stats, and it's like, these are the expected goals. This is how many goals we should be having. And I was like, yeah, but we're not having that. Like, <laughs> yeah. so that's a change. Yeah. Get but my he brother. Like, he's an accountant. He <laughs> can go through yeah. these numbers. If you were to his numbers. So, yeah, going into that, we were just like, I mean, something has to change. But he was like, no, stick to the process. So we, like, stuck to it. That free kick actually kind of changed things because that we ended up getting a point. That was the first goal we scored. And then I think the next game was in Miami, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I think vaguely, a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. But so, um, and I was talking, I was telling this story before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before show. But we we're going to Miami. We're, it's a Saturday game, I believe. We find Thursday night. Um, we have a team dinner. So our assistant coach is in charge of like booking the dinner, booking the place, and everything. So we're like, all right, we don't know what, what to expect. It's gonna be a nice place. It's gonna it's in Miami. We don't know. So we end up going there to a dinner. We show up. It's kind of dim lit. Like, we open the door. There's a DJ in the corner. There's, like, lights going on. We're like, are we here for dinner? Are we here to, like, for the right. club? Like, yeah, what are we yeah, yeah. doing? We got a game in a couple of days. Um, so we all, like, situate everything, and we're like, all right, like, do we drink? Do we, like, what's the deal? <laughs> and then we see <laughs> the waitress. The one person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we see the waitress walking out with a bottle of wine, placing it on the table next to us. We're like, all right, I guess we're <laughs> yeah. drinking. Like, this is <laughs> what we're doing. <laughs> um, so we have, we have a, a great, like, dinner, like, enjoying everything, and then we end up winning against Miami. And that was like the winning streak that we had going to the playoffs, and we yeah. got hot, and then that's how we ended up winning. So, wow, that's what I, um, what I think was the turning point for the for that the dinner, that yeah. dinner, the, dinner. The, the, dinner. The, club. the club, the club, the club vibes. I yeah. always think a dinner will change your mood. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter when you have it at breakfast, lunch, <laughs> <laughs> you can have a good long dinner, any glad, bottle of wine. Yeah. What about what about after? Obviously, after you you win MLS Cup, we we talk about this all the time. Like they release like roster updates before the playoffs are even yep. done or before MLS Cup is is played. Do you have that moment where you can really sort of celebrate and bask in that in that win? Or is it immediately on the phone with your agent going like what's gonna happen next year? It's um the day after. So you have the full night to celebrate and then the day after is when you get the call if you're staying or not. Oh yep. yeah. I, I remember mean, they... being in bed, have a little bit of a headache and the uh GM was like, hey can you meet with me at in the lobby at Certain so so time yeah so uh, it's it's I still know. in Portland still in Portland still, still in Portland, the hotel yeah. yeah 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 jeez I mean they can down it's like wait till first of all congrats on them let's go second of all huge <laughs> you gotta find a new team right? now for you uh, <laughs> okay. we won and it was a we <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a difficult um th- you know uh, uh two you emotions to have yeah yeah I knew uh halfway through the season I wasn't gonna be back next year. oh yeah and 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 what is the why why are you so certain is it because the you just see this do they tell you or do you just see kind of things sort of changing around at the club so I wasn't playing under Ronnie and I go up to him midway through the season it's like hey am I a part of your plans because I want to play if not then I want to find a new team right and which is what I appreciate about Ronnie he was, he was honest he was like look you're not part of my plans like we can try to find you another team if you want so Okay. From halfway through the season, I was like, I know I'm not going to be here next year. So. Okay. Well, yeah. yep. what what happens after you hear something like that? I mean, like if mid episode Christian's like, we've decided to go a different way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The rest of the episode might not go as planned. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, at, at that point, it's like I have to kind of be selfish. It's like I have to go out there and try to be better, be better for myself because then I need to find a team next year. So. Right. What does that What does I, that mean? Just go out there and try to. Get better every day, regardless if I'm not playing. Play, well, I mean, because other teams might well be watching. And stuff, and yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And then if, like, the coach or GM reaches out and it's like, hey, how was Tony as a player and in the locker room and stuff? And it's like, well, after we told him this, he completely went to crap and yeah, did right, that. And right. other teams probably would A lot of, a lot of it's hard. marks. <laughs> 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 but it's hard to hear you're not a part of the plan. For sure. And then... You know, maybe you weren't part of the plans, but you were you were used quite a bit. Yeah, you no. were you, and you were a necessity, and you were needed uh, in, in in you know difficult moments for yeah. the uh, during the season. For, I mean, and that's another reason why probably I was composure in the playoff games because I had the conversation with him midway through the season, and then he needs me for the playoff games. Yeah, and that's like all right. Well, if I'm oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 like I would go out there and perform and like help when I'm last cup and stuff. But I know I'm good enough to play on this team and and everything, regardless of like what you. Tell me. Yeah, yeah. It's such an interesting relationship. You think of these teams as these like harmonious, but there's so much interplay oh, yeah. relationships back and forth. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like any kind of workplace kind of environment, right? You have to. I'm sure there's like politicking. I'm sure there's clicks. I'm sure oh, there's yeah. 
all of that. Um, but the, you know, everybody has to go on with that with that common goal of 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 just uh, you know finding some success uh, uh, for the team. But I it's. It's um I think when you hear the stories directly there there's obviously a deeper sort of emotion yeah. to um to to the player cuz again we see players come and go and you don't know like you know I, I think of a lot of the the criticism that uh Jesus Medina got um while uh while at the club right and it, it it's a thing where look you there were there were things that were expected of him and he didn't you know reach them but then he provided such huge moments for for the club in the playoffs, yeah. and and so that's like I I don't want especially players that that come through NYCFC I don't want to ever have some negative thought of it. like they they gave their service to the club and I I, I consider myself a, a you know day one supporter so I'm gonna show that that like appreciation as long as the players are like kind of respectful to the badge yeah. that that's what kind of means the most so yeah. that's why the the you know even players that don't play well that I, that isn't my necessarily my standard of like if i like you or yeah. not i mean some players they try really hard and and you know and don't find that success but that's the thing it's like there's um I, you know and i think when we spoke to you in in 2021 the 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 thing that i think that triggered in me was just like man i want to talk to more of these guys that we don't hear from yeah. as much because there's a lot of like interesting stories and and great uh, uh personality and because i think mls kind of just throws out the big names that's all we sort of hear but like yeah. guys like you that have have had uh, you know difficult seasons and different clubs and stuff like that it that are, are like i don't know the sort of bedrock of, of the league in my opinion yeah I mean, there's a lot more of us than the other guys. Right, right, sure. right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Let's go to war. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. There's more of us than them. <laughs> Tony's like, these these tattoo yeah, millionaires. Yeah. <laughs> these yeah. tattoo millionaires, right? Designated. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I guess now that you're out of it, but having gone through the system, maybe your viewpoint is different than ours. If you were Don Garber for the day, yeah. what's one change you would make in MLS that you think would make it a better, more successful league? <laughs> it's always for his day. He's like, yeah. give me my job back. Um, <laughs> make it amazing. <laughs> I would probably. You could take us through your thought process. I'm, I'm thinking just salary cap, like mm. trying to ra not raise, even if it's raise the salary cap or just take the salary cap away. Yeah, for MLS and like just let teams go out and spend whatever amount of money they want and have the other owners keep up or yeah, just get destroyed. I mean, look, we've we've I, mentioned this. By the way, there's a slew of people going, woo, <laughs> as you say that. All right, you could be also a co-host of this yeah, show. 100%. Alexa says the same exact I thing. Says, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, because, it, you know. They want to compete. Like, it, they got to pay the players. But yeah. do, you, do you think there would be, what would what would be lost from the league if we did that? Because I'm, I'm well, in agreement. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you pay a player a ton of money and then they're not bringing in revenue, then obviously they take a hit yeah if there's a salary cap that i guess the owners can kind of balance that risk to... yeah but it does limit your exposure to risk as well yeah. because you're like well i look at colorado no disrespect yeah but they're coasting you know yeah. what i mean mm -hmm. i mean they yeah they finally started spending some money this offseason yeah. uh but it, it does a you know it does something and, and we talk about this often of like especially with salary cap the the, the constraints don't necessarily hurt those th those top five percent of players. Yeah. It's really the players like that are kind of on middle. on the oh, in yeah. the middle or the fringe yeah. that like are these I don't know pieces that can kind of be tossed around and, th and and thrown away. And that I think that's you know we we were talking um, a little bit about like Julian Gressel. He is is I think a, a, a good example of a player who is not a DP, not a TAM player, yeah. um, and but is he, he's sort of like really good not great to probably hit those like you know financial uh as far as in the market he probably mm -hmm. doesn't he's probably not getting in, insane offers from other clubs but because the the of the the salary rules in major league soccer he's stuck in a place yeah he can only make a certain amount. only make only make as much and then teams are like oh well we can't pay you so we gotta trade you yeah so because other people will pay you pay us for you you will become you you become an appreciating asset yeah. and then and then he's like, bro, I just bought a house. Yeah, no, like, no, why no, do I got to yeah. move? Wait, is there a way where you could not <laughs> trade me and just give me the money that you would get? So it's like, oh, even 
it, being a productive player in the league is not necessarily a guarantee that you're that, that you're gonna get a job anywhere. It's, yeah. it's a little fr- or uh, at least a job in the same place every year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I see that with a lot of players as well. Like they want to stay with the team that they're at, but a because of how their contract structured or because their age or whatever it is, like their team can't afford to keep them. So okay. and then you hear leave. and then you hear about like uh, uh, Miles Robinson yeah. going to FC Cincinnati because. He's like, I don't want to take a pay cut to go to Europe. And you're like, wait, now we're paying players yeah, too much? No, yeah. <laughs> How is it possible? I don't, know, I don't know where in Europe he's trying to go, but that's <laughs> yeah. not going to pay him. I was like, wait, what? I'm like, when, when did we, when did this flip? When yeah, did we yeah. stop paying players too much? <laughs> 1.5 milli doesn't seem like an insane amount where Europe can't compete, but maybe it was certain places he was getting offers from. Maybe he was getting lowballed. You were in the league during that era where things started to change a little bit, where it went from four charter flights to you're not flying commercial anymore, yeah, right? That was nice. How, what <laughs> well, was it that. like going commercial before that? Oh, I mean, especially in New York, you don't know where you're like, you have Newark, LaGuardia, and JFK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot of airports. A lot of airports. <laughs> So like Wait, whenever are the we travel, going to the wrong airport ever. I mean sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the first time, and it's like, oh, I go to Laguardia yeah. instead of JFK. <laughs> it's but... like, where are you guys? I'm in North. <laughs> yeah. What terminal is it? Like, yeah. a completely different airport. There ain't no terminal T <laughs> over here. What the hell's going on? I got a crying baby with me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, yeah, so New York was tough, um, and especially like whenever we had CBA meetings, and we were trying to figure out like how many games to chart and this and that, and like, um, I think the example was like Columbus. You can fly to Columbus, small airport, zero problems. New York is like, we want to charge every flight because we don't know. We're at, flying out of three airports. Yeah, like right. it, The traffic there, it's miserable. Um, but then COVID happened, and it's like, you guys are charging everything, and we're like, thank the Lord. <laughs> yeah, It was okay. so much easier. Like It was out of White Plains. I lived probably like 10 minutes from there, so I was showing up 20 minutes before the flight, show the guy my yeah. ID, ride on the flight. It was perfect. Now, so, for people who perfect. don't know, though, all the charter flights are through an, an airline I've never heard of called Sun Coast. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Did you sun, sun, sun country, sun country, sun country. Okay, sun country. no, I've never heard of this. I've never heard Me of either. sun country. First time I've seen the sun country plane. <laughs> okay, I what's don't... it like inside? Is it basically like a relatively inexpensive airline I mean, flight, or do you get bigger seats? It's not Spirit, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like a little bit above Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Spirited. It's Spirit. <laughs> okay. Look, as long as the doors stay on the plane, oh, that's yeah. the bar that's... for me now. <laughs> now you're oh, like, this is a good man. flight. <laughs> Uh, in, under no circumstances <laughs> did someone's air, uh, you know, cell phone get sucked out of a hole. On the no, they probably the did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> they probably did that on purpose. Now, uh, like, right, well, at least my door stayed on the flight. Yeah, like, yeah. It was a good one. That's All right. Cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, Shouts to Sun Country. Bro. So look, I, look. I, what an airline. No disrespect to Sun Country. We'll we'll take the spot. You know, we we had we had a, a, a horrific pandemic, but we got charter flights out of it, so they all worked out. It was worth it at the end. <laughs> it all worked out. Um, Could you imagine your designated players at the wrong airport though. <laughs> you're just like dude get on the next flight to I just saw um, uh, J- uh, Jermaine Defoe was on Filthy Fellas mm-hmm. uh, and he he told a story about you know he was a, d- a DP for Toronto FC mm-hmm. and then he um, he was talking about flights and it, it was commercial flights and so he would have a first class seat and he'd be like, oh, okay, cool. And now the rest of the team is coming on and they all go uh, into the back and coach. And then he's like, and then the manager walks in, uh, his coach, and is also walking to coach. And he's like, all right, I guess I'm going to sit here <laughs> yeah. and just be. And he's like, that- no wonder you vape when they tell you not to vape. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. You can't talk to me with your biscuit cookies. I got you t- <laughs> yeah. So look, I, I, it was a necessary change to, no to improve the culture. You can't respect the coach <laughs> if you sit in coach. Okay, yeah, you tell the coach, hey, bring me some water when you're yeah, back there. Yeah. Why are you back there? <laughs> you do me a favor. I'm about to get my hot towel in the room my vibe <laughs> with your tactics. So, uh, so amazing. So uh, Tony, and now you are working. Um, uh, you co-founded, you created, co-founded, yeah, co-founded. Uh, an agency. Be, the the be, be more agency. Be more agency. Be more yes, what? sir. Which is aw- awesome to see, and uh, so you, for you so, to decide. Uh, please, please nice. talk uh, a, a little bit about what you're, you know, essentially uh, giving back uh, to the game and, and yeah. what you get involved in. Yeah. So whenever I was playing, there's a lot of companies reaching out wanting to help build my brand because yeah. I knew it was important. There's a lot of eyes on me, or a lot of eyes on professional athletes whenever you're playing and stuff. Um, but like any other athlete, oh, I'll, I'll do it later. I'll do it next year. I'll do it whenever. And and now that I'm retired, it's looking back like I definitely should have built my brand when I was playing. So I had a friend come up to me and was like, hey, I've, this is my idea. I mean, I want you to be a part of it. You were just in that, that world. Um, what do you think? So 
uh, co-founded Be More Agency, and we're essentially helping athletes build their brands on and off the field. Okay. What's, that, what's an example of that for those listening who might? Yeah, so so an athlete, um, if they want to help or if they want brand partnerships, we'll reach out to these companies for them, help them get deals, build their social media profiles, help them. Yeah, it's like uh, NIL has been obviously yeah. in college uh, sports has been a, a, a thing that's growing. So uh, I think from from a the perspective, because there's a lot of people who work in this uh, and work in this business, but are not always uh, former athletes. Yep. What what is, what is uh, what do you bring as far as uh, uh, you know having the experience as being an athlete and getting you know those opportunities or even missed opportunities? Mm-hmm. That what what are you bringing to uh, current athletes that you're working with? Well, I think first and foremost is just being able to relate to them. So I know a lot of these other owners weren't athletes before, so they can't really relate to the day to day or they don't know what they're going through right. with, and all this stuff. So just being able to have that relatability with them, I think, is a advantage for. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Could you get us a sponsorship with Sun Country? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think if we uh, keep the segment out of Sun Country, <laughs> we might be able to. But Has they, have they ever been brought up more on a podcast? <laughs> okay. Their SEO number is gonna be crazy. <laughs> They're like, oh, people are talking about the same admin from Belize. Also, just swipes to the Sun Country account. She also manages. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no man, it's great. It, it's uh look, I, I'm uh, really excited for you and happy for you, and I'm glad uh, you you came through. I, I think these, um, you know, I, like I said, I think a lot of these stories are just uh, uh, often uh, go too long unheard, and wh- I think what the challenges and struggles of, of of just being a professional athlete, playing in in major league soccer, and also going through you know the stuff. Like I'm sure you you deal with this with with athletes that you work with of like you know. You dealt with a lot of things that some of the players don't have to deal with now, uh, and and you know you can just be like back in my day, you yeah, know whatever yeah, you know. do the whole thing. But like baggage it, it, claim, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you have to wait. Yeah, you have to wait for your bags. Okay, <laughs> kids are spoiled these days. Yeah. While Jermaine Defoe gets carried <laughs> on a <laughs> pillow at the airport, that's <laughs> chill. <laughs> okay, the thing's a little bit different. So you look, you laid the foundation uh, of this league, and uh, you know I think. Uh, you know, especially in in twenty twenty six when the World Cup is here, I think there's so much to look forward to, uh, just the, the growth of this sport in this yeah. country. Uh, so I appreciate hearing stories, uh, uh, you know, the people uh, uh, that help build that. So Tony Rocha, thank you so much for joining us, man. This has been so cool. Yeah, thanks again for having me on. All right, great blast. And uh, well, let's let's do the account. Oh yeah, yeah. Be more. Uh, be you more. go to be more agency. B e m o r e agency dot net. Oh, uh, we don't even follow. We gotta hit that follow button or right now, bro. E dot m o r e a g e n c y. Be more agency. Be more agency. Go go give them a follow. All right. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.